We're all familiar with the three what's, what it is, what it can do for me, and what does it cost. Tyler Rickenau Country Financial can help you find the answers with insurance coverage to help protect what's most important to you, all at a price you can afford. So while you're juggling work and kids while trying to keep an eye on your financial future, Tyler Rickenau Country Financial will make sure they are the first ones there when you need them most. The kids are back to school and your schedule is busier than ever. From daycare pickup, doctor's appointments, sports and college tuition, a parent's signature is a powerful thing. Have you ever stopped to think, what would happen if you weren't able to provide one? With thoughtful estate planning, you can make sure that your child's health and education needs are met in the event of your absence due to a temporary incapacity or even death. The estate planning team at Hurley Burrish is here to help. Fostering deeper relationships, influencing behavior change, developing resilience. You're about to start winning. Here is your host, Christine Bright. Welcome to the Parenting Game. We're glad you're here with us for this program. And I'm your guest host today, Dan Presser. You know, being mentally well improves your quality of life. It helps you cope and it boosts resilience as well. Mental wellness is essential for all of us, regardless of our age, race, or our gender. Now this episode of Parenting Game, we're going to discuss men's, women's, and family mental wellness with a panel of experts. And they are here with us now, Donald, Heather, and Christine. Welcome to the show today. And Christine, obviously you're usually here in this seat. Today you're letting me graciously sit in as your um, guest host today, but just want to talk to you quickly. You are a parenting and family coach, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you help families with mental wellness? Well, a lot with you know mental wellness is scheduling, it's transitioning, it's just being aware of how your family is functioning. And a lot of times parents are overscheduled and you don't realize it. You're just in that mix and you're going, going, going. So I come in as a coach and just shine spotlights on areas that are causing the most tension. And we talk about those and how we can problem solve those. And two, sometimes, you know, I end up sliding over with the parents once we get those routines and things set, we slide over and now start paying attention to what haven't you been doing for yourselves as like a couple or individually and get those, how can within the family and everything that we have going on, how can you still do things that will improve your mental wellness. And Heather, tell us about your mental health coaching with women. Yeah, so I coach Christian women and when I originally started my coaching business, I was focused on helping ladies decrease blood pressure medications, decrease diabetes medications, that kind of thing. What I found was if you don't have the mindset that you think you can do it, you're not gonna be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I started focusing on mindset and really looking and digging, helping my ladies to dig deep into the reasons that were preventing them from being able to achieve those things that they really wanted to achieve, but their mindset just kept getting in the way. And Donald, I understand you work with men who might feel a little bit stuck. Mm. Uh, tell us about your work with those men. Yeah, so uh, men can be stuck for a number of different reasons. So I'm a therapist and I'm a coach as well and I consider myself a mentor. So sometimes getting unstuck involves going back and that looks a little bit more like therapy and sometimes it's about moving forward, which is really a uh, coaching orientation. And uh, mentoring is really about educating. So sometimes it's just about educating men about you know their health and well-being. Uh, to support them moving forward. Yeah, I, I know that feeling very well. Mm -hmm. So uh, I want each of you to talk uh, a little bit and I wanna have you answer this question. First, we'll start with Christine, then we'll go to Heather, and then we'll go to Donald. Now, first question, what factors play a role in poor mental wellness for folks? So within the family, I would say the number one is overscheduling. And you just have everybody on the run and you have no white space mm. just for everybody to have quiet time to connect is, is the biggest one. The, the second that we often talk about is parenting out of reputation. A lot of our parenting choices are made because we're overly concerned about what other people think. 
my kid's having a meltdown in the store. Everybody's looking at me. So I reinforce that behavior by giving in. I would say those are the, the top two stressors whenever I talk to the family is that overscheduling and then being overly concerned about how people are viewing your parenting. Ticked a lot of boxes for me, I know, on that. Mm -hmm. How about you, Heather? The, the three main things that come to mind with mindset for, for my Christian women is number one, living in fear. Fear of judgment, fear of the unknown, fear of failure, and even sometimes fear of success. The second thing is their beliefs that they grew up with. So many times we were told in school that, or by our parents, that we have to be perfect or we were no good, we weren't worthy. And the third one is post-traumatic stress. Really, a lot of traumatic stressors that have happened in childhood and growing, growing up that have really affected the mindset and prevented ladies from living their dream. And Donald, the, the factors that play a role in poor mental health. Yeah, so I kind of think about it but like either external or internal. That can be a focus of the work. So externally, I mean, there's just a lot of demands. And Christine, you mentioned this too, just like the speed of our lives and, you know, constantly being on the go and not having that kind of like time to recharge and regenerate. Um, so looking at external things, work, life, balance, managing stress. And then internally, and you mentioned this around mindset and just negative thinking and kind of how we get in our own way. And so sometimes, um, you know, addressing some of the ways that we think and feel can kind of unlock us from, um, you know, being stuck. Okay. And let's start with you this time, Heather. How do you help people improve in the area of mental wellness? I help them to really look at where those beliefs came from and where those fears came from. So that, because once you can look at where they came from, you can heal that so that you can create new stories for yourself. And then the other thing is with the post-traumatic stress, I do something called timeline therapy, which helps get rid of the limiting beliefs, helps heal the post-traumatic stress so that they are able to move forward with their life. Timeline therapy, just kind of explain it a little bit sure. more. Sure, so timeline therapy is focused on looking at the events that happened that caused the trauma. It's focused on five main emotions, fear, sadness, hurt, and anger, and guilt. And we never live, relive the events. What we do is we look at the events and take the positive learnings from the events to allow us to be able to move forward so that we can, when we think about those events, we don't have that anger, that sadness, that fear, that hurt, that guilt. It's so easy for us to, to kind of dwell on the negative mm -hmm. too often. I, so. I think I need to sign up for that. <laughs> 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 Donald, how about your answer to that? Well, I think it's a really powerful technique, the narrative therapy. Um, for me, uh, broadly, awareness and education. Uh, Albert Einstein has a quote I love, it, and it, it, it's um, something to the effect of, um, the, no problem can be solved by the same consciousness that created it. And for men, we get socialized to be just really lone wolves. And so I find that in my work with men, just having a conversation can kind of raise awareness. And then, you know, my clients can have new perspective on, you know, how they're approaching their problem or their issue. Um, so, um, yeah, raising awareness and then education is a big piece too. Again, because how men are socialized, we often don't know that we have what, we don't talk about our inner lives and we don't know that we have these resources that are available or communication is a big piece. And um, so kind of just whatever's needed. Yeah. So easy for us to kind of fall into that, I am a rock, I am an yes, island kind yeah, of mentality. Yeah, the stoic you know. idea, yeah, for sure. And how about the folks you work with, Christine? What, what's a role in the, you know, their poor mental health? So as I said, again, it's that overscheduling is one, the, you know, um, parenting out of, you know, reputation, what other people are going to think, and what, there, there's these stigmas on what we think parenting should look like. So with a lot of my clients, they get stuck in the fact of, mm. I need to enjoy doing everything with my kid, and not acknowledging that there's some pieces that aren't my favorite that my, I have to be perfect. And if I'm perfect, then I'll have these great kids. And our kids don't want us to be perfect. They don't want that standard 
to, you know, that's a hard standard for kids to live up to. Mm -hmm. So the more real that you can be with your kids is a big piece of it. And we do some work, you know, I'm a coach, not a therapist, so we don't do a lot of that backwards work. Um, that's why I'm glad to know like you and, you know, I can send people to that. But we do take a moment to do some work on what did you, what did you like about your parents' parenting? What didn't you like about your parents' parenting? And it just shines a spotlight on, I didn't like that about how my parents parented me, and I am drawing some of that in to my parenting. And it just puts you know a light on that, and sometimes it's deeper work that needs to happen, and that's when I refer out you know to a therapist. And then we also do work at what do you like doing with your kids? and what you dread doing with your kids. And it's interesting with couples, most of my couples, I think I've had a couple where they were the same, but most of my couples are opposite. It's a discussion that you've never really had with your spouse. Mm -hmm. So, you, and what we tend to do is we feel guilty that I don't like doing certain things with my kids. So we invest more time into that and overcompensate where the whole time our spouse is kind of over here going, well, I really like doing that. So like give that, you know, give that time to me, but it's just a conversation that's not happening. And to release them, you'll never be a 10. Like if, if doing homework with your kids is just not your forte, but you keep figuring, I need to do this, I need to do this. You're investing time in something you'll never be a 10 in as a parent. But if you're really good, like with the artistic side and projects, invest your time in there, you know, and be a 10 parent over there. And then if your spouse is better with the homework piece, hand that off. And it's really just, you see this, it's okay. I don't have to like everything with my kids. I mean, for me, I look back now and it's funny because I, I work with children of all ages and even do work with infants. But when my son was little, I, didn't, I was, I wasn't the, I, I don't know what to do with you, you know? And now I know it's like, oh, I could read with them. There's so many things, but that wasn't my strong suit. When he started walking and was a toddler, that's when I really, really, you know, grew. But my, his dad was better, you know, at that piece. But I look back now and I really didn't, I should have gave his dad more time to do that. But I was grabbing for it because I'm like, I, I should do this. I, you know, I should be better at this. And, you know, his dad could have really have taken that. So that's some of the work that I do with parents is a lot of releasing parent guilt, mm -hmm. you know, on things. And mm -hmm. this is okay. And you can ask for help. And then with single parents, if you get tutors or find friends or other parents that like doing, if you're not a big nature person, but you have a friend who has kids and they love going for nature walks, use them for that and then trade. You know, what are you better? Are you better at the homework? Okay, we'll bring your kids over and I'll help with, you know, with the homework. But just find those things and then get the support you need because that's where a lot of stress comes in. It's trying to be really good at something that you just, you're just not. It's mm -hmm. not your forte mm -hmm. and it's okay. I really like that advice. You're really giving us permission to be ourselves yeah. and then you need to communicate it with your spouse or whoever you're working with to raise your parent, your, yeah. your children, I yeah. should say. That's really it's, interesting. It's so helpful, and I, I love it when, and I'm sure you guys have this too, when you have those aha moments and you just see that release mm -hmm. of, you know, stress or guilt, it's like, yes, this is why I do what I do. Well, let's keep, <laughs> let's keep it moving now. Uh, when, when people come to talk with you, and I'll start with you this time, Donald, what can they expect when they meet with you? Mm -hmm. Probably that's going to be a lot easier than they thought it was going to be. I think there's a lot of stigma and resistance around the process, certainly for my clients as men. You know, there's vulnerability and some fear and concern about that. But it's really just a meaningful conversation. Um, I often say we don't learn from experience. We learn from reflection on our experience. And I think the, the process of just having a conversation about what matters to you, what's important to you, what's your experience really helps you know, men sort of get clarity around like what's important to them. Um, and so it's really kind of just a, a, a conversation. Uh, often it's not a big heavy lift, uh, which I think a lot of people think the process can be 
Um, but even a conversation for some people might seem a little bit overwhelming yeah, at times. Yeah, it can be, it, yeah, for sure. And especially for men, I'll, I'll keep saying this, because we are uh, such lone wolves, you know, but right. we're too close to ourselves, you know. So there's, you know, there's a little bit of resistance, but that's true for anything, anything that's worthwhile and meaningful. You know, you have to lean into it a little bit. So, but I find often with my clients, once they get that initial sort of, session done or we have a conversation it's it's not what they thought it was going to be and they really open up to the process and and see the value in it how about you christine what can people expect when they first meet with you um that for one i'm going to just tell them how awful they are at their parenting no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there is no i'm going to try to help you but no it looks hopeless really what i i love doing initially is letting them know they're doing better than they think mm -hmm. you know we're we're hard on ourselves yeah. you know in all just areas of our lives and especially you know i work with obviously there's behavioral issues with the children that's why most parents come to me and they're you know like don't know how to fix it and they're carrying a lot of guilt and that's the first thing that we just talk about like share with me what's going on and I share with them like you are doing a lot of things well and so I, I love doing that and just kind of bringing that pressure down and pointing to what you are doing well and then we look at because we often don't realize as parents because they'll come to me and say I have these explosive behaviors I don't know why and they're super random but when we really look at it I 100% guarantee they will see a pattern and it's usually a transition issue it's like you're going from one thing to another but us you know just go through our days and we all transition and the majority of us transition easily, and but we are unaware that we have built little habits to help us transition. We don't allow our kids those little habits to help them transition mm -hmm. from leaving home and going to school. Mm -hmm. And when you pinpoint, okay, it's the transition, so it's like when we go from this to this and this to that, or any time that they're playing and now we're switching to something else, oh, they really struggle with leaving what they're playing with because they're very intense. Okay, so now we know what that is. What tools can we put in place to help them transition better? Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, counting down? Is it letting them pick how many minutes that they can play? And we start seeing those patterns and putting little strategies in place. They see those behaviors, you know, start decreasing. So it's kind of detective work, you know, that we're doing. Sure, yeah. mm -hmm. But a lot of parents feel like they're going to come into it and they're like, I'm just gonna like be, you're gonna point out everything that I'm doing terrible as a parent. That's the biggest fear. And when I, that's why I like, let's have that initial call because that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. These are across the board. I mean, every parent, cause they don't come with a manual. I never, you know, I've learned this along the way and I was fortunate to have a foster son where I learned some of this stuff early, you know, with my son and I don't know about you, but has anybody, have you read anything on how to help your kid transition mm. as no. a parent? No, no. I'm yeah. like, that's great, and that's not great. Not unless you search it out, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it'd be like, so how do your kids transition? Yeah. I, fine, I guess, I don't know, because mm. it's just something we don't pay attention to. Yeah. And once we learn about it, that, okay, they're transitioning, and you start noticing in yourself little habits that you've built. For me, it, it's a cup of coffee in the morning that helps me transition out the door. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say I'm a little, eh, if I haven't had my cup of coffee. Well, let's build that for your kid. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's getting their blanket, their wife, who knows? They'll yeah. figure it What's out for their themselves. Cup of coffee? Yeah, yeah. To, to get through the door. Yeah, so that's what's fun about doing it because it isn't about all the stuff you're doing wrong. It's about the stuff nobody knew because you didn't give a manual yeah. and now you're learning and you're going to do better mm -hmm. and that's why i say kids don't come with a manual 
That's why I created the playbook. Mm -hmm. and, well, yeah. and it sounds like so much we do in our life. I mean, we have to have some grace with ourselves and understand that, you know, you're not going to pick up a baseball bat the first day and be able to hit a baseball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to learn along the way, and you have to have some help to learn along the yeah. way, too. So mm -hmm. I think that's, again, great advice for us to And I know in your practice. practices, too, it seems like that I think we're getting much more comfortable with the asking for help, mm -hmm. but we put this pressure on ourselves that yeah. mm -hmm. I just need to know how to do this. Yeah. You know, I need to know how to, you know, run my life successfully mm -hmm. or parent successfully or how to be a good dad or, you know, how to be a good business person or whatever that we just should know it and we don't. Yeah, I really see well-being just like anything else. It's like it's a skill. There's, you know, you you just get educated. So, so much of my work is about education, just like you would educate somebody about financial planning or career development. You know, it's just like you know, mental well-being or right. health sure. and well-being, it's the same thing. I mean, I'm, sh I'm guessing you went through some training to be a realtor. You just didn't be like, I know how to sell a house. I, yeah. I did, and I, you still learn every day. You yeah. know, and you learn from other people yeah. who do it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, with parenting, you don't often sit down with your parents until maybe later in life and you're in it. And you'll sit down with your parents, if you're lucky enough to still have your parents around, mm -hmm. to ask for some advice about those things that you thought they did well. Uh -huh. um, and so yeah. it's nice when you can lean on that. Mm -hmm. as well. Well, Heather, let's let's give you a moment to talk about what people can expect when they first meet with you. You know, so many times when they first meet with me, they um, they feel guilty for investing that time and that money into themselves. Hmm. And so it's helping them to see that you can't pour from an empty cup. And most of the ladies, by the time they come to me, they're just, they're so overwhelmed in life. They, they don't know what to do next. They don't know where to go next. And so helping them to see that this is the best step for you because you are starting to take care of yourself. And what I always tell them too is one thing, like when you're on an airplane, when they do the whole spiel about the oxygen, yeah. mm -hmm. what do they tell you? Put yours on. Put mm -hmm. your mask on first, mm -hmm. before your kids, before anybody else. Because if you can't put your mask on first, you can't take care of anybody else. And so it's helping them to see that it's okay to put your mask on first. Mm. And to also just really look at the, the positive things that have happened in their life so that they can start to focus on that. Because so many times we focus on all of the negative things. And taking that time to focus on, yeah, I, I really did do really well in life. I really accomplished a lot, yeah. and mm -hmm. so helping them to see that. I really like that analogy of the, the airline instruction <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's so true, right? Mm -hmm. You always think, no, I should help them first, but no, you gotta, you got to be healthy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and speaking of healthy, you guys are all very busy. You have your businesses, you have things you're doing, you have children, things like that. What's one thing you do in our time left? What's one thing each of you do to stay healthy? And then at the end of us, let, let folks out there who are viewing today know about your website, where they can find more information about you. And, and I want to start this time with Christine. <laughs> um, so the things that I do to stay healthy, for one, is working out mm -hmm. is a big part of it. Um, I have been struggling with my routine, and I realize I am not a morning workout person, mm -hmm. so I've given myself grace in that. I'd rather work out late at night, even if it's 8 o'clock at night. So I've switched you know, my routine to do that. Cause you know, the research is like first thing in the morning and get all those endorphins, not for me. No, I like doing it at the evening. So I've given myself grace in that. And you know, eating and staying hydrated, um, water, I've been, that's one thing that I've really paid attention to now is how much water I take in. And boy, did it just help so many health issues that I was having. And you know, I have that group of people to check in you know, I have um, a therapist with what I do for a living, working with behavioral kids, taking on a lot of people's pain and, and coaching. I, d I have to have check-ins. Mm -hmm. So I do have a therapist and do brain spotting and That's I know true. it, like I'm very aware now when I'm feeling, you know, so, something's off. I just, I'll have that moment, I'm like, something's off. I need to call my therapist, <laughs> you know, and yep. just, you know, just sort that stuff out. It's mm -hmm. funny what you take in and uncover and it's like oh that's why i was feeling funky i had there was this interaction like weeks ago and i didn't realize how negatively it had impacted me so it's been really helpful just to to be um, confident and okay with i'm never gonna get there 
you know, it's okay to, yeah. to be checking in constantly. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good to have that cleansing, so to speak, mm -hmm. yeah. How about you, Heather? Definitely exercising, same with me, and also water intake. Um, yeah, I think those are some of the main, so important. You know, when you when you fill your body with the good stuff, your body, it's, it's like fueling your car with gas. When you fuel it with good gas, you're gonna get better results and better mileage, and mm -hmm. it's gonna run better. And same with your body. Your body's gonna run better when you, when you feel it with the good stuff. And also just taking the time throughout the day to every five minutes, every hour for five minutes. Just take time to just breathe in, maybe get some fresh air. So many times we just, we keep going and we keep going and we keep going from one task to the other all the time and not taking the time to refocus and just allowing ourselves to relax and so that you can be more focused with the next task. And Donald, something similar for you? Do you have a, uh, another technique? Yeah, well, some similarities. First of all, I need to connect with you on my water intake because <laughs> I'm, I do terrible at putting, <laughs> hydrating myself. Uh, but exercise absolutely is key for me. Um, being outside in nature, I need to do that um, just to feel connected to something outside of myself is important for me. Um, but one strategy that I love to do is kind of being really intentional about segmenting my day. So I get up early in the morning and that's just kind of time for me to do my reflection and just to kind of move at a, at a really slow pace. Um, and then get my kids out of the door and then I spend time, you know, working and then I have in during sometime during the day, like an, I call it my hour of health and I just like don't do anything because I could just work all the time. I could just like mm -hmm. constantly be working. Mm -hmm. So I need to be really intentional. So I have these touchstones throughout my day and then my afternoon is more work and then in the evening I spend time with my family. And so just being really intentional about like kind of the rhythm of my day is important for me. Great. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we're almost out of time here, but I just briefly want you all to Tell us about your websites or where folks can find you and more information about you. So, Donald, let's start with sure, you. Sure, I'll go. Uh, OnPurposeMentoring.com, yeah, this is my website, so you can find out more information there. All right, and Heather? Yeah. Uh, HeatherStrandRNCoach.com, you can find out more information there. And Christine? And ParentingGameWins.com, and you can schedule a free 30-minute session when you go to the website. All right. Well, thank you to all of you, Donald, yeah. Heather, Christine. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Great to have you thank on the program today, and thank you for allowing me to be the guest well, host. Well, thank today, you. Christine. You're amazing. You make me nervous to all go right. over my <laughs> <laughs> and, and thanks to all of you for watching The Parenting Game today. I've been your guest host, Dan Presser. We're all familiar with the three what's, what it is, what it can do for me, and what does it cost. Tyler Rickenau Country Financial can help you find the answers with insurance coverage to help protect what's most important to you, all at a price you can afford. So while you're juggling work and kids while trying to keep an eye on your financial future, Tyler Rickenau Country Financial will make sure they are the first ones there when you need them most. The kids are back to school and your schedule is busier than ever. From daycare pickup, doctor's appointments, sports and college tuition, a parent's signature is a powerful thing. Have you ever stopped to think, what would happen if you weren't able to provide one? With thoughtful estate planning, you can make sure that your child's health and education needs are met in the event of your absence due to a temporary incapacity or even death. The estate planning team at Hurley Burrish is here to help. Thank you for watching The Parenting Game. All episodes of The Parenting Game are available on demand at sunprairiemediacenter.com.